Welcome to Mondo and Friends, presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco, and today we have a champion in the building. Player for the champion Los Angeles Football Club. I got to say the, the way the announcer says it. <laughs> Los Angeles Football Club. Uh, <laughs> and then we also have him as a, I would say, one of today's all-star U.S. men's national team players. I'm talking about Kellen Acosta. <laughs> Kellen, how are you, brother? I'm good. I'm good. No, I'm happy to be here. Very happy to, to have you here, man. Uh, I know we've been chatting for, for a while, and uh, it's super cool to, to have you here and, and just talk football, talk fashion, <laughs> you know? And, All the things. And, uh, All the things. The first thing that I want to talk about is uh, the beginning of, of your journey into football. Do you remember what that was like? Do you remember that moment that, that you said, I want to do this for a living? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, dating back, I probably started, uh, you know, playing when I was, I think, four or five years old. Um, it's, it's been a, a, an ongoing competition of who's the one that got me into the sport. It was <laughs> my, my dad says he was the one, my mom says it, my grandparents say it. I mean, I, I don't remember, but I got to thank all of them for, for introducing me to, um, to my first true love, soccer. How old, how old were you roughly? I was probably five years old. And so for me, I mean, it was a sport, it was my first sport. Um, and I just loved it because I excelled at it yeah. since, since the jump. And so, you know, when you're good at something, you want to continue with it and stick with it. And, you know, as I just got older and progressed, I'm like, this is something that I really want to take to the next level. I mean, it didn't take until probably I was, uh, um, probably wasn't until I was like a freshman in high school. Almost got a, an ultimatum, if you would say, <laughs> uh, from uh, back when I was in Dallas for FC Dallas. Yep. Um, so part of the academy, the rules were, um, if you want to join the academy, you can't play high school sports. And so I'm like, okay, gave it some thought because I, I grew up in Texas where American football was huge. I went to Allen High School, yeah. so there was uh, some crazy athletes there. So, you know, from my standpoint, I'm like, okay, I can either go to the football route, American football route, where I could might have a chance I could maybe be a kicker or something, who knows, or I could play my first love, which is soccer. And, yeah. You know, I chose soccer and haven't looked back since. Man. Uh <laughs> You you decide to to play for an academy. You said right. FC Dallas, yeah. And uh, at that point, are you are you right away thinking I'm I'm going pro? Is that something that goes through your mind, or is that let me let me feel this out and see how it goes? No, I mean I've always had aspirations of, of being professional, but you don't really think about it actually happening. You just like okay, let me just take the next step. Yeah. And what's the next step from there and from there and kind of just laying that foundation and just you know keep building from there. And, um, you know, you know, like at, at, a, at the youth level, I, I had a, you know, pretty good, you know, youth career. I was in the youth national teams and, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I made it to this level at the youth. I'm like, okay, so what's next for me? And so, you know, I always have eyes on being a pro, but, you know, I was fortunate enough that at the age of 16, was able to sign my first professional contract with FC Dallas. Oh man. And at yeah. that point, are, are your parents just like, dying of, of excitement like what was that like you know yeah, back at, at home? i think i think it was kind of a, a bit of mixed emotions because you know they they wanted me to to get an education <laughs> and so i did go that route for a bit i did some you know unofficial visits i, I visited um smu which is local uh, i was in florida i went to usf um and then i also um, went to maryland mm. and maryland was actually the school i verbally committed to and so I had my sights on going to Maryland because I also had aspirations. If I wasn't a uh, um, professional soccer player, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, or commentator. Right. And so Maryland had, you know, a strong relationship with ESPN, and also it was a strong football uh, soccer school. And so I was like, okay, I can go this route. So you know, I can check off two boxes, right? I can either I can still play play the sport that I love. Maybe I'll make it pro. If not, I have something to fall back on. So. Um, I was able to verbally commit, I think, I don't remember from my sophomore or junior year, but, um, you know, shortly after that visit, you know, <laughs> I had to call up the coach and say, uh, there's opportunity of a lifetime and uh, FC Dallas wants to sign me. And this is something I've always dreamt of since I was, I was younger. And 
can't let this, can't let this pass me by. And at so. that point, how, how old are you then? Um, that was 16. 16? 16. 16. Dude. Yeah. As you're a kid. kid. Yeah, I'm a kid. Yeah, kid making <laughs> big decisions um, and having adult grown up conversations. Like I had to call up the coach and let him know. It wasn't like, hey, dad, like, hey, mom, can you call him and tell him that I'm not coming? Yeah. <laughs> I had to be the one to, you know, kind of just suck it up and just, you know, just mature in, in that moment to, uh, you know, just tell the coach that. I just this is this is an opportunity for me and I want to take it so I thought it was a it was a cool experience because it was um, kind of bittersweet for him obviously he was excited for me but he wanted me to be a product part of his program but yeah. that's sometimes that's how life goes really yeah for sure do you ever look back like I was 18 when I started doing radio right for the biggest radio station in Los Angeles yeah uh, and well, I was at power. I was 18. I was, I was, you know, pretty much running the station at it. I, I, I think at 18, they would let me run the show for four hours to mm -hmm. sometimes 12 hours out of the day. Right. And now I look back and I'm like, dude, they really trusted it. 18 year old. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> With the entire radio yeah. station. So do you ever look back like, Man, I was only 16 and I was doing all of this and making all these decisions and Right, right. I was just kind of just thrown into the real world like that. I mean, it was funny for me because I'm 16, I didn't have my license, I didn't have a car. My grandma or my dad or my mom was dropping me off at practice. Yeah. I was getting picked up. I'm like, I'm 16 and then, you know, there's guys on my team that are twice my age. I'm probably maybe the same age as their kids. Man, which is um, which is crazy. I mean, the, one of my teammates, David Ferreira, I played with him and I also played with his son, wow. Jesus Ferreira. And I'm like, this is this is nuts. But it's, it's one of those things where I'm just super grateful for the opportunity and, you know, all the coaching staff and the staff members that got me to that point. It was just a, a proud feeling for, for myself. And for me, I just wanted to, to give back to them, give back to those that just gave their trust into me. And, yeah. you know, that set me up to, to have this opportunity of a lifetime. You know, every journey is, is different, right? Like it's hard to, to ever give advice to someone like a, a young athlete. But like if you had to, something that stood out for you growing up, going through, you know, the academy and then going pro and all that, like what would you tell a, a, a 16 year old version of, of yourself yeah. at that point now, <laughs> Man, looking that's, back? That's tough. I think you just can't take you know, any moment for granted. I think from my standpoint, I kind of let some of the years just pass me by and not really just take it all in and be present. I'm always thinking of, okay, this is here, what's next? Um, and I'm, I'm always like looking like two years down the road, like, oh yeah, I'm here right now, but in two years, I'm going to be here. Yeah. And sometimes you kind of overlook the process and everything that got you to that point. Um, and just to, to know that you're exactly where you need to be. I think sometimes you, you look at different circumstances and what other people have and you wish you kind of had that. And I think it's not really a jealous thing, but it's more of like, you know, why are they getting that mm. and not myself? And so sometimes, you know, it took, took, uh, took a bit to, to kind of realize that for me, for, for my younger self. But once I realized that this is what I'm supposed to, where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to have, it just made me just go through life, you know, a lot easier, I would say. Yeah. What what made you, I guess, what, what gave you that, that growth? Was it just, just the, 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 the struggles, the challenges of life or? Yeah, I mean, a combination of just all the things, right? Yeah. Just, you know, life, just be lifing really. <laughs> and then just, you know, my support system helped me along the way. And, you know, I mean, everyone deals with setbacks and obstacles. I mean, from my standpoint, I mean, in, in the sports world, it's injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had some, some injuries growing up, um, you know, lack of playing time um, and just getting beat up by the older guys right. <laughs> a little bit. Um, not in terms of like I was getting into fights, but just like I'm 16 years old and I'm trying to compete with guys that are double my age, like grown, I mentioned, grown, grown men, grown men <laughs> doing grown things, right? So it was a, it was a, you know, it was a lot to, to handle at first, but it's one of those things where you kind of learn as you go. Yeah.
Hey, Mondo here. Right now, you can have everything you want on the network you really want. Introducing my plan. Get exactly what you want, only pay for what you need. Starting at just $30 per line per month for four unlimited lines with auto pay plus taxes and fees. From there, you decide exactly what goes in and what stays out of your plan. So you pay for what you want. Head over to verizon.com slash Mondo right now you said verizon.com slash mondo right yeah yeah verizon.com slash mondo but we're st we're still shooting the commercial oh oh i'm sorry no no you're, you're good man get exactly what you want only pay for what you need starting at 30 dollars per line all right let me help you out yeah. all right so you go here yeah what would you say is is one of the biggest lessons that you that you learned on the pitch on the pitch playing with with you know older older guys on on your squad um i think for from my standpoint it's it's always about you know the next play i think for me i'm my own biggest critic and sometimes i get into my own head where you know i make a mistake and then when you get into the mode of trying not to make a mistake, that's when you make the most mistakes. And, you know, it took me a bit to kind of just to be able to just shake off plays. Like, okay, that happened. So mm -hmm. what, now it's like, what's next? Next play, next play. You kind of have to have like short term memory, right? Exactly. Exactly. Because before I'm like, okay, I did this. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. And I'm in my head. I'm second guessing. Now I don't know if I should make the pass. Should I shoot? Should I cross? Should you know, you do all these different things and it just jumbles in your head and now everything's just puzzling. And so, you know, when you have that clarity, it allows you to, you know, think freely and it allows you just to be yourself and enjoy and have fun. At what point do you <laughs> say, I want to play in the World Cup one day? Did that start really, really young? Y yes and no. Because, yes, because like uh, growing up watching it, you're just like, okay, I, I hope to be there. But at the same time, like that's so far away and so distant that you don't think that you can actually achieve it mm. in a sense, right? I'm not saying that I'm trying to downplay myself, but even, you know, reaching the professional level, you're just like, okay, that's something I always wanted to achieve. Yeah. But actually achieving it is another, another step because think about, you know, all the kids you grew up with. I mean, only 1% actually make it to that level, mm -hmm. right? And so from my standpoint, I'm thinking, I'm doing all that I can to get to that point, but there's still so much um, um, to, to learn and to gain to get there. And then once I'm there, then I'm just like, okay, I need to get minutes, be a mainstay on my team. And then from there, it's like, hopefully I can make the jump into the national team, not just the national, I can't just you know be in and out. I gotta be a mainstay in the national team yeah. to even get a shot at the World Cup. And it's just like, just just keep on stacking and building and keep climbing. But, you know, it took, <laughs> took a lot of years to get to that point. Do you have a, a most memorable match memorable in, in, on the match. national level? National level? Um, I mean, there's, there's a few that pop into my head. Obviously, you know, when I made my debut in a World Cup, stepping onto the field, it was one of those things where I kind of had to like, take a second to look around like, this was all worth it. This is, this is this is where I wanted to be since I was younger. I wanted to play in a World Cup, and I'm achieving, and I'm here. Like it was kind of just an amazing feeling. And then it's just some others. It's just like when you when you do the fir your first right, your debut, first goal, first goal for the national team, you know all those things. So you always kind of remember your first, and you know those stick out as well. What's what's your what's your first uh, goal for the national team? Who, who are you guys uh, playing? First goal for the national team was against Ghana. That was a free kick. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. It hey. was pre pre uh, Gold Cup. And then we ended up winning the Gold Cup as well uh, yeah. shortly after. Man, for, for someone that loves the, the sport, <laughs> talk to me. Give me your, your perspective, your POV on, on being on the national team. And and the the national anthem goes off, like what is that feeling like? I mean butterflies really, because you know you're you're representing something that's bigger than yourself, right? Not just a name on the back, but the crest on the front. Like you're representing your country, your nation. So it was just it's a proud feeling to always put on the put on the shirt, and then just to be alongside you know my my friends, my teammates, my brothers, 
and just to just sing it loud and proud i mean it's a, it's a really a, a special moment yeah who, who uh, would you say is is someone that you have grown tight with throughout your your career that that is uh that's on the you know national team that has played on with the you. National team, I say like the guys that I'm probably the closest with is probably Christian Pulisic and and Tyler Adams. Those are guys that I spend the most time. But I think just collectively as a group, we have a, just a close knit group where we all kind of just hang out with one another. So it's yeah. always it's always fun. You know, every time we you know we get together, it's like you know we get to just hang out and chill and you know be friends. Been on the field, we're competitive, and we have laughs and, and banter, and we just enjoy it really. Nice little reset, if you would say. What team would you say is is uh, the U.S.'s the U.S. biggest rival? Biggest rival? I mean, Mexico. Mexico? Yeah, <laughs> for sure, Mexico, and then obviously, you know, Canada is definitely sneaking up as well. Oh man, Canada Canada's has been balling too. Yeah, yeah, very good team, very good players. You know, well coached. They did. They've been doing a great job in, in a number of tournaments and. You know, they're definitely a force that's that's coming up. But obviously, um, U.S. Mexico is deep rooted, and yeah. uh, How, it's a no, rivalry okay, so, that's 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 always ongoing. Yeah, and games coming up too. So uh, no, it's uh, no, it's 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 exciting. I would say. Yeah, are those are is the energy is I'm sure is just different for them. Unreal. Those. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's I mean you can feel it on the TV. I knew growing up. I mean, it's one of those things where like the camera's kind of shaking because it's just so loud and everyone's jumping around and so much just energy and passion and um no it's and then just being on the other side of being like in the field is just you kind of just like look around like this is this is where i want to be you want to be in these games these tough matches against a rival um with these stakes i mean it's 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 perfect yeah tell me about your beef with chicharito <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got blindsided by that one. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean beef? I don't. I don't think we have beef. Why he said we have beef? <laughs> nah, no, all, uh, no. It's just it's it's uh it's part of the game. I think I think it was funny. I saw like I got tagged in some stuff. They you talking? You referring to the, the when we played them in uh, in dignity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we were just arguing about whose ball it was, and uh, kind of a little bit back and forth. It's. It's no, it, it was fun. I mean, Chicharito is a guy that I admire a lot. He's had a you know exceptional career and he scored a bunch of goals. So it's it's kind of crazy where you know I grew up watching him. And now I'm playing against him. And yeah. Obviously, he suffered a a tough injury. Yeah, man. Uh, I know, devastating for sure, for sure. But you know, wishing him a speedy recovery and hopefully uh, he'll be back on the field soon. But like you said, you know, when you're it's it's all love and respect for everybody. Yeah, I black out on the field. I don't. Like for but, me, like it's it's so funny because you could be my childhood friend, you could be my son and my mom. Yeah. When we step onto the field, like I don't care. Like yeah. I I black out. Like I'll I'll yell at you. Sometimes I cuss at you. I'll kick you. I'll cr uh, claw. I'll do whatever to win. Yeah. And then after the game, I act like nothing happened. Like hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's for dinner tonight? Are we going? We still going? <laughs> you know, like it, it it I don't know. It just it's like a switch. It just happens. I just get kind of just like fiery and I just can't control it. I know a lot of people. You were trending too when when you uh, tackled Bale in the World right. Cup. Right. I mean, me and Garrett are <laughs> locker buddies. <Yeah. laughs> you know, we're you know we're we're teammates, and he sent me a text. You know, afterwards, calling me a cheat, but he said <laughs> he said uh, he said he would have done the same thing. But you know, I mean, it, it's part of the game. I mean, I'll do whatever to win. And in that moment, I didn't even think twice. I'm like, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to kill him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to have that yeah. that like fire, right? Like you have it's to have that. You got to have that that extra edge, right? Because all of all the players on the field are all talented, but you know, there's little details that that can separate yourself from them. Yeah, and I feel like that that play in particular was such a clutch play, man. It was such a <laughs> like high IQ level of play to be like, I I got to bring you down on this. Yeah, level. I mean, everyone knows his left foot. I'm like. This would be the best World Cup goal ever. And do I want to have this replay for, for years to come? Or I can just chop him down and, you know, give him a nice little high five, yeah. little pat on the back and say, hey, sorry. It is what it is. Sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> Speaking of Bale, let's talk about the championship. Let's talk about that, that moment 
um, you know, where I, I was there. So like, yeah, it was nuts. I was, uh, I was DJing that day. I was hosting DJing right. that match. I've yeah. been with LAFC. I've been with the club before they even broke ground. Like the stadium wasn't even there. And for me, that moment was really special because I mean, just, just winning the, the, the championship, right? Like the MLS cup, it was a special moment. Damn. It was sort of like a, like a, a full circle for me, you know, being there since, since day one. And I'll tell you from my perspective and then I'd, I'd love to yeah. hear yours. So we're, I think we're, so we're down, right? We're two, one, I want to say two, one, yeah. two, one, we're down and it's uh the game's about to end and I have to play the music for the entire stadium throughout. Are oh, you talking about maybe it was three, three, two, three, two at that Sorry, point, three, two, three, two at that point. And I have to play music and I'm, I'm going through my crate. Like I can't play. All I do is win. You played Oye no, Mi, Mi Amor? That I played Oye Mi Amor that, that day. No way. Yeah. I remember it. I remember that vividly. It's crazy. But sorry. I'll let you continue. Yeah. 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 So, so we're down three, two and now I'm looking through my, through my crate and I have to play uh something that's like sort of generic right like i was thinking we were gonna lose at that point you know and uh, just a few minutes left and uh and i'm looking through my bruno mars catalog i'm like all right this is kind of friendly you know and then i hear bail bail i look up bail's in the air and he heads it in and we all lose yeah. our mind in the control room uh and then from from that point on right we go into into pks and or extra time and then we go into pks and um, it, it's it was such a, a crazy moment, and then I could feel the energy in the stadium. Everyone was like super nervous, but you know, anxious but excited too. And that's when I played Oye Mi Amor. Yeah, that went viral. Uh, no, for, it was crazy. For I remember Oye. seeing the even seeing the videos. I just get chills because you kind of just like replay everything like in a split second. It was it was kind of just I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, in, in that in that moment, the the stadium comes together and it becomes like this like kumbaya right. type of moment. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there. Everyone's like hugging and, and singing, and even if you didn't have ever heard the song, you just knew the words. I didn't even know the song, but I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> this is okay, this is nice, <laughs> okay, this is the vibe. <laughs> right, right, right. I was, I was, you know, I was on the field at the time. I'm nervous. I'm pacing back and forth. And that just gave you just like a calming presence in a sense. And you're just hearing the fans kind of just em embrace the environment and the song. You're just kind of at ease for a moment. Yeah. And then I just knew, I'm like, we're going to win this game. Yeah. We're going to win by any means. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, extra time, PKs. We're, we're going to find a way to win. Yeah. That's, that's where home field advantage comes into play. Right. Yep. yep. So then, you know, long story short, Play that song. We all sing. We all celebrate at the end. You know, we get that the MLS Cup. Now, from your point of view, how was how was that match? How did that play out for you? I mean, it was craziness. I mean, I was fortunate enough to open up the scoring with the with the free kick. Yep. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, it's one zero early on. Let's just hold this lead, and then you know, I'm thinking in my head, I'm. I'm gonna get the player of the match, nice little trophy. I score the game winning goal, life's good. And we can just move forward and you know, ah, ah <laughs> you know, confetti, all, all the things, right? Yeah. That's, that kind of like crosses your mind, but obviously that's not how things play out, right? It's a final. Yep. They're fighting, they're clawing, they wanna win just as bad, you know, and it's back and forth. You know, I thought we had control of the first half, obviously the second half was a different story. They got back into the game and you're just like, yeah. Oh no. You know, they scored the first goal. a um, little bit of pressure. Then we I think we scored the second goal, if I'm not mistaken. Murray scored the header. Yep. Um, so that puts it two one. Mm -hmm. And then we, we give up the last um the free kick goal, then Jack Elliott scores, and you're just like, Oh no. We we really just fumbled. Like we, we, the game was won, it's over. I could already feel the trophy in my hands. I can already taste yeah. the champagne. I'm like, ring me, this, that, and the other. You think of, you have all these emotions in your head and you're like, man, we let it slip. Yeah. By just one little play, one little lapse in concentration. And you're thinking, oh man, now we gotta go 
into you know this overtime and anything could happen. And then obviously I get subbed out. I'm I'm tired. I'm kind of pissed at Steve. I'm like Steve, why are you taking me out? I don't want to come out, but I understand you're the yeah. coach. Got to make you know whatever you need to to make to to get us to win. You know, made some subs, made some changes. You know, the the changes proved to be <laughs> correct, right? Of course, Steve. <laughs> and um, you know, you know when they scored the third goal, it's kind of just a knife to the chest. Yeah. And you could feel like the eerie silence, and it was yep. just. I mean, it was deafening. It was just like everyone was just kind of in shock. You go from the game should have been done and dusted. We should have won. We should have already been celebrating to, oh, no, what just happened? Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where I'm just I'm just on the sideline, just pacing back and forth, just, you know, just praying and yelling and screaming and trying to just help my teammates. Everyone on the sideline is doing the same. And, you know, we get this ball, Cheeky's bombing down the sideline per usual, like every game, <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, Cheeky's still going. It's you know, 100 and something minutes. He's still running like it was the first minute. And, you know, Gareth's in. I'm like, Gareth, he loves a big goal in a big game. If he gets one opportunity, just one, yeah. just one. It could be a free kick, it could be anything. You just never know with him, but yep. he always comes in clutch. And from my standpoint, when Cheeky crossed the ball, I was already running down the sideline <laughs> to celebrate. Cause I knew, I'm like, Gareth is going to dunk on this guy. Yeah. And it's crazy because, like, I don't know if a lot of people realize, but when he was in the corner, I was celebrating with him. I ran from the bench to the corner. I met him in the corner flag to celebrate with him. We just had, like, this cool embrace. And, and you know, when we, we tied it at the end 3-3, three, three, I'm like, That's we it. got this. Yeah. Got this. And you added on to, you know, the Oya and Mia Moore onto it and, uh, you know, the fans embracing the environment to – the chanting and the screaming, the kumbaya, as you yeah. as you mentioned, I'm like, we got this, got yeah. this. And then superhero John McCarthy comes into the game, makes Man. some unbelievable saves, and you know Ilya finishes it off. And the rest is history. The rest is history. And then I can finally taste the champagne yeah. and lift, <laughs> and feel the medal, and lift it up, and, and just just celebrate with my with my teammates. A lot of people don't realize that the guy that Bill jumped up with. Is like super tall too. Yeah, that was a guy that scored two goals, yeah. and he jumped over him. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. in and playing with Bale, how was how was that like, man? No, nah, it's great. It's great. I mean, you're looking at a guy that, you know, arguably has, at one point was one of the best in the world. Yeah, and he's had a, a crazy career. You know, five Champions Leagues, and I don't know how many goals he scored, and played in some big clubs, and and. No, just to not only know him as a player, but just to get to know him as a person and seeing his family and, you know, interacting with them, which is a special moment because you go from a guy being so distant to a guy being, you know, a friend, a brother, a teammate, and to, you know, have that relationship with him was, was pretty cool. Yeah. And, and do you, playing with someone like that, do you learn a few things, you know, on or off the pitch? From from someone like Gareth Bale? Yeah, I think for from my standpoint, I take bits and pieces of a lot of my teammates, like a lot of guys that I admire. I mean, whether it's Carlos Vela to Christian Teo at the time to um, Giorgio Chiellini, Gareth Bale, guys that play at the highest level um, with with great clubs, guys that know what it takes to be champions, guys that know how to take their take care of their bodies, guys that you know train exceptionally well, and guys that are just super just personable. You know, they could be, you know, these straight up just a-holes, but these yeah. guys are super down to earth. They're, yeah. they're willing to give whatever to the team. Um, you know, they give their input, give their advice. They, they're not ones to just scream and yell, but more just offer words of encouragement. Yeah. And so that just just makes me just, just, just admire them even more because you're just who they are as people. When it comes to becoming an athlete being an athlete i feel like it's i, I don't know it would say 50 50 50 percent physical and 50 percent mental right thousand percent thousand percent yeah especially yeah. like you, you said you you've gone through some uh some injuries right, right? Throughout there's your, trials your in, career. In, in every case no one you know has this career that just goes like this right i mean we all go through it at different levels 
for sure. Um, but it, like you said, I mean, obviously the physical part is actually being on the field and, you know, you know, having those opportunities, but also the mental part that, that comes along with it. I mean, people think, you know, being an athlete is, is glamorous and is this, that, and the other, but obviously there's, there's struggles that come with it, right? It's, it's that idea that we always have to be on all the time. And, you know, it's this idea of like, you have to, um, be happy you have to you never can have bad days right it's like fan comes up to you you have to take a picture i could have the worst day but i I have to smile you know i have to have these good interactions i i can't be down okay i make i have money of, of what may have you but you know money's not the root of, of happiness yep um but i think people just just forget that you know we're humans too i mean i think a career doesn't define who you are and so I think that's that's something that I think people are talking about it more so. So it's it's been cool to kind of hear other people's experiences of what they've been what they've been dealing with it and just knowing that you're not alone. So I think that's been that's been just really eye opening. And I think people are starting to realize that everyone you know deals with with different things in their lives. Right, right. You hear um, there's YouTube videos about players like, oh, do you remember this guy? Like. Do you, yeah. do you, uh, here's what happened to so-and-so, right? You know? like childhood, child prodigy, yeah. then turn, didn't like bust or whatever. Right. All these different names they want to, you know, label. And I feel like, us. yeah, a lot of that is, is mental, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, it, and it's tough, man. I mean, I feel like it's tough to, to have, you know, any, any, any job, any career. Right. Um, I feel like we're magnified, though. I mean, for our standpoint, it's like, you know, you have a bad game, then you're not allowed to do anything, okay? Or I can't post today because we played yesterday and we lost. Or Mm. I'm not allowed to have fun. It's like it can only be about my sport. People don't understand that. It's like you don't – like what I do here, I don't need to carry that to my house. Like I have my own personal life as well. And I think people people don't realize that that <laughs> that you know you could be human as well. You know, it, I think, and it's always interesting that I think LeBron always talks about being more than an athlete, right? And I feel like, for our standpoint, we're more than just athletes. We're we're also people. We also have feelings. We also, you know, have other hobbies and other interests. And and people really need to take that into account. They say ball is life. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> ball is life. <laughs> but there's more, yeah. way more to that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, the, the soccer ball has given me my life, but like I said, I'm more to it than just a soccer player. You post, you're just having dinner. Why, why, are, you, why are you having dinner? Why aren't you on the pitch yeah, practicing? Like why, why are you eating this? Why are you drinking that? Why are you... It's it's nine o'clock. You should have been at home by seven thirty. It's like, come yeah. on now, yeah, come on now, yeah. It, it, and it's, yeah, it seems like you get that's that's perception that athletes have. And I, I feel like mm-hmm. you know being in, in entertainment and having I would do radio shows every single day. I couldn't be um, sad. I couldn't mm-hmm. be. You know, having a bad day because right. always on. It's like you walk through those doors. It's like deep breath, smile, laugh. You know, it's 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 hard. I mean, but I mean, you can always say that it comes with it. But yeah, it's hard to find that 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 fine line for sure. What would you say is is the most challenging part of of being a professional athlete? I just think maintaining a high level in performance um that's the most difficult part because for our standpoint none of us want to lose and i feel like in a sense fans in in most cases feel like they care more than we do even though that's our livelihood Mm -hmm. you think i want to go out there and lose you think i don't care no it's not the case i mean it's it's always funny because I think athletes get so much social media abuse. It's actually quite sickening at times when when people are are just preying on your downfall before you're even stepping on the field, even more than just the game. You know, wishing, you know, ill will on your on your family to 
you know, hoping that you get injured, hoping this and the other. I mean, and then to to, to the racial abuse, to I mean, all you name it. I mean, we've kind of endured it, and people people's excuses it comes with it. But mm -hmm. no, I mean, how would you feel if I if you did a bad job at your work and I'm screaming at you? <laughs> right? It, it's tough. And then you know, I think there's that's there's difficulty in that. Some you know players are able to deal with it in a different way and in a more um, helpful way to them. And in some players, it's it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard to find um, that avenue to escape. And I think that's when you, like we talked about before, where players are um, unable to get over that mental side of it. I think part of it is just the accumulation of all these different things and all these different pressures coming from every which way. And it's hard to, to really deal with it. Do you ever search yourself on on social media when you have a good game or a bad game i used to do that in the past yeah i, I can't lie i think it's it's a lot easier when you when you had a good game you're like oh, i scored two goals i can't <laughs> wait to see what people are talking about yeah, like yeah you know hate on me now they can't yeah yeah <laughs> right and there's there's games where you know you know it wasn't your best performance and you're like i'm gonna just not open instagram up for a bit i'm not gonna open up twitter for a bit facebook yeah let me just let it mellow out like because sometimes it's people are cruel I mean, yeah no i know it's, it's, it, it's tough it, it it really is it really is we've had we've had you know a a, a good amount of of athletes like you know champions boxers right. soccer players um on on the show and and i always feel like and i hear that often right like one day fans love you another day yeah, very fickle yeah they love you and they hate you they, they love hate, you it, at your high they hate you at your low yeah and there's no kind of in between and it's funny because you know you're talking about champion 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 but it's like they want more than just that that's never enough <laughs> yeah right they're like oh you're a champion but that was last year what about this year right 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 yeah and so it's like you know, the funny thing is that I always kind of just tell myself is like, you're asking that of me, but what are you asking about yourself? Yep. Like you want me to be all these things and I'm trying super hard and, and you go and fight, you know, obviously we, we didn't win the, um, you know, the final, um, I guess it's been a week now, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks and, you know, some of the messages that I received from it and I'm like, I wanted to be a champion way more than anyone else. Yeah. So don't tell me what i can and can't feel right and and always funny to me that people because i'm into fashion they're yep. like oh you care more about fashion than you do about soccer <laughs> and if you if you put up as much effort as you that that you do into fashion maybe you'd be a better soccer player i'm just like how there's no correlation there at all <laughs> and that, see, that, that's why i i enjoy these these conversations because i feel like they're very important right right it's a moment to to humanize athletes pro athletes all-star athletes like yourself right because people watching have to realize that it's 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 a it's a toxic culture that happens when watching sports right you know it's, it's great because like you, you you have the time of your life you know like we talked about the championship well, we all remember that that moment if lafc is your team right <clears throat> but it's also good to to know the other side of the coin because mm -hmm. it's like yo at the end of the day i'm human too exactly you, you know can, and i, I want to win interests. yeah <laughs> i thought yeah i want to win i don't want to lose no one <laughs> wants to lose you don't go through life wishing to lose right. always want to win it's all about small victories at, at any capacity and so that's what i'm all about i want to win at all areas of my life what do you do mentally now like do you do you do therapy or anything like that to, to help you yeah. continue to grow and, and you said win and in all aspects of yeah, your life? a combination of a lot of things i think it's important to just have resets i think glorifying off days is super important man i think a lot of people don't really take that into account um two is just having a great support system people around you that love and care for you for for you not just a person that plays a sport as a as a career and you know, three is sometimes it's great just to talk to people, right? I think there's this stigma around, you know, as men, you need to be strong, you need to be this, you need to be that, and you know, talking about your feelings, that's feminine or that's whatever the case, whatever people are saying out there, right? But I think it's important that sometimes you just need to just get things out. Yep. I think I prioritize myself and, you know, I have a, a guy that I talk to 
um, you know, weekly just about more to, to optimize my, you know, athletic performance yeah. and get the best out of that. But it's just important to kind of just having that reset, right? And just focus on the things that matter and, and also just reflect of how you got to that, got to this point. Yes. Because I'm thinking as, as yes. a kid, this is, I'm in the exact point that I've always dreamt of. And you, when you kind of like, you know, you know, put that in your head, just like, it just, just makes you just kind of in awe, right? And then you just think about all the just stuff that got you to this point, all the nonsense, all the, the practices, all the social media hate, the racial slurs and abuse to, uh, you know, from my grandma to my dad to my grandparents driving me to trainings to and from to soccer tournaments and friend groups and you're adding all these things together and you're just like i'm here and all the sacrifices you made to get to this point it just makes it that much sweeter i mean it makes the victory the triumph just just that much more amazing it's good to reflect too because because you can you can like one can can get so lost in in a moment that's why i promise on being present yeah I think it's huge. It's super important because, like I said before, when I was younger, I'm always thinking about what's next, right? You know, let's say you won the the championship, right? You're like, okay, now what's next? What's next? Or you're thinking about, okay, let's say the other team when Leon won, I we should have won, and it's always like you you almost think of it backwards. Almost you're playing like, why me? Why did that happen to me? It's kind of I always say that's like the victim mentality. Yeah, and once you kind of go down that downward spiral, it's hard to climb back out of. And so it's important to kind of just just be present and be thankful and grateful for where you're at right now, what you have. And that's super important, just having that, you know, that laser focus. You said glorifying off days. And I can't tell you how important that is to any person. Right, you know, not just an athlete, not just someone that that is that is in entertainment. I mean, just off days, period, to, right. to anyone that that works, that that has these these, you know, big responsibilities in their lives. Like, there's a lot of people that don't take off days. Yeah, you know, it might not take a toll now, but it will down the road. Yeah, people don't realize that. Yeah, I mean, I I want to take more off days. Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, I'm not saying to just get lazy and like and not do anything, but it's important for you to separate yourself from work. Yeah, and separate yourself from, you know, maybe it's good to do things on your own. Whether it's like go see that movie by yourself, have that alone time, that quiet time. Put your phone down. Go for a walk. Go for a hike. Go work out. That class you always wanted to do. Do it. Learn a new language. Learn. I mean. There's so many different things. I think it's important to have that reset because I think life is all about cycles and having those routines. And sometimes those routines are toxic and it's important to implement certain things to break those cycles. And, you know, you go from having these cloudy days to sunshines and rainbows when you're eliminating, you know, certain things out of your life and implementing the 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 better ones, the better situations. Yeah, man. Yeah, so so important. So so important to to know that or or be reminded of that. You know? Including myself, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Glorify off days. Uh you mentioned uh challenging the most challenging, you know, part of, of your career. What's the most joyful part of of your career? I play a child's game for a living. <laughs> How can I? How can I not love that? You know, I'm going from being a four year old just kicking a ball around. You know, have my parents yelling at me, cheering me on, to having thousands of fans ch- chant your name and be super excited and, and know who you are. I think that's special in its own in its own sense. And you know, th- this game has has brought me so many opportunities and cool experiences that. I mean, I'll be for forever grateful for. I've seen so many parts of the world. I met so many just amazing people. I've got to, you know, play in a World Cup, something that I've, that I've 
dreamt of. I mean, it's been, no, it's been just an amazing journey. And so for me, it's just, just constantly having fun with it. I just really just enjoy playing. I love practicing. I love, you know, just being in the locker room, just around my, my friends, my teammates. You know, I love everything that the game brings. I just, for me, I just love a game day. There's nothing better than a game day. Waking up, having my breakfast, my coffee, my lunch, and I'm going to work. <laughs> who, who who are you listening to on your way to game day or when yeah. you have your headphones on? What's what's that soundtrack sound yeah, like? It's always interesting because people always ask me, but for me, I put my phone on shuffle and I just let it ride. And it's like, if that's the song I want to listen to in that moment, I'm listening to it. Whether it's from, you know, rap to R&B to country to gospel to, you know, dance, techno, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if that's kind of what I'm feeling in that moment, I'm just going to just play it. But I also have this bad habit of, <laughs> now that I think about it, I have a bad, so whoever rides with me, they always get super pissed, right? Because <laughs> for me, like I, I talk about it, having my phone on shuffle. But I listen to like maybe like the first like 25, 30 seconds of a song and it's like, all right, next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go through full songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It drives people insane. And I'm like, well, you could drive next time. This is my car. <laughs> You're a, a nightclub DJ at heart. 30 seconds and then on to the next song. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know, you know what it is, right? I'm changing the vibe, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, people, people hate it. They hate it. And they just hate just how big of a change each song is like i said it could go from country to to r&b to rap and people are like why don't you have a playlist i'm like what's well, the whole point of shuffle then you know <laughs> that's the whole point of why we have shuffle um <laughs> but yeah so if you don't like that just don't ride in my just car. don't ride with me <laughs> don't ride with me. Take <laughs> pick up another car. carpool <laughs> yeah exactly uber carpool or uber pool or whatever it is <laughs> you know you mentioned uh people chanting your name you know when, when you're at, at bmo stadium now and, yeah. and you, you know, Kellen Acosta. When you hear that, what is that? Chills every time. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because they do they do the 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 starting eleven announcement before a game, and I mean, I hope Steve is not watching this, but <laughs> you know, we're like in the team huddle or whatever, talking, and sometimes like I'm like, okay, my name's getting called next. <laughs> yeah. I just want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. You're like zoned <laughs> I'm like, out. Zo I'm like zoned out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like. Hey, was was my name a little bit louder than so and so's, or or they they not love me as much? Like, do I need? I need to go a little bit harder than I guess. <laughs> no, but it's always it's always cool to just kind of just hear your name and people just know your name and you know want to get your attention. I mean, I'm not saying that in like a like an arrogant, self centered way, but it's just just a really cool feeling because I was on the other side of that at one point. I was a kid going to games. You know, calling for players to get their attention to hopefully sign my, sign my um my jersey, my shirt, my hat, and so for me, my standpoint is I try to prioritize myself and giving back because I know what it was like I was that that boy that was in the stands that was just screaming for you know my my idol or a person I looked up to 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 sign my stuff and just acknowledge me. Yeah, I've seen you with fans and. And I can tell that, and I, I think that's when I I was just telling the the team I'm like, Kellen's Kellen's a good dude, man, and I've seen I appreciate you that. <laughs> interact with with, with uh, you know with fans, and you know I can tell that that you care, and like you said, there's a, there's there's a good amount of, of people that they just see it as work, and and game's over, they leave, they can care less, but I know that you personally care more. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think that. For, from my standpoint, it's all about being authentic and genuine, right? You're not just doing something just to do it. You're doing it because you actually care. And for me, I care about giving back. I care about the community. And I feel like from my standpoint, I have a responsibility in doing so, especially with my platform. And I think it's important to, you know, leave an imprint, you know, on, on those around you. And whether that's even having a conversation, signing an autograph, or even just tapping into the community to, um, to you know just just better it i you know i established my foundation this year so i'm you know trying to really help out the the la um community as Love well it. as congrats thank you thank you so well as dallas well as denver it's uh, it's been an ongoing thing but baby step by baby step but no i think you know la's just been a, a community that's really just embraced me and and 
I really feel at home here and it's been, you know, it's only been a year and a half, but I feel like I've been here most of my life. I mean, the people here have just been truly amazing. And, you know, I just, you know, I love going to games, love meeting people. And, you know, I just love just, just being in and out of LA really. Yeah. I, I thought you were here for, for longer than, well, than since than last February. So you're talking about a year and like a few months. Yeah, man. You blend right in, man. Well, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Texas to, to to Los Angeles, like Texas, like Fred yeah. over here. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Fred, let's go. Fred let's has. Go. Oh, you're not wearing. Oh, he's gonna pull up his pants now. So. <laughs> Texas. Oh, okay. He's a Longhorns. proud proud Texan right yeah, there. Longhorns, baby. We call him L.A. Fred now. <laughs> LA Fred. <laughs> he's. I mean, do we lose you or what's going on? No, 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 I'm still there. Okay, okay, okay. You can't, you can't take this off. Yeah. <laughs> we we tease him and we say that he's gonna he's gonna uh, laser that off to. No, nah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Can't do that. No, right, nah. big nah. LA here. No, nah. I mean you can you can add it. LA LA's been home for you, so you can you can add it. But Texas is is deep rooted for me. I'm Texas boy at heart. You can't can't take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Best place on earth, right? <laughs> so you, you talked about your your foundation, right? And you want to give back to to the communities in in Los Angeles and I'm not sure Dallas, like you mentioned. Right. Tell me more about your your foundation. I think it's important for me because you know I mentioned that soccer has given me everything in life. It's given me structure. It's given me um, an opportunity to to go to great places and and meet exceptional people. So from my standpoint. Um, I want to accept more accessibility to fields and to, to build, I think, build courts, uh, whether it's sports courts or soccer pitches. Because you think about how many basketball courts are there to soccer fields just within the 30 mile radius. Yeah. And we always talk about sometimes our, our best athletes aren't playing the sport or some, some of the kids aren't getting recognized. I mm. think it's important to establish programs to help those kids get recognized. And then, you know, from then on, you can funnel them into environments to help better them and obviously give them opportunities to have better education, better opportunity. And also just break that, you know, systematic curse where, you know, you aren't just what your environment is. Mm -hmm. You can be whatever you want to be. Like you don't need to be what's around you. You stay away from, you know, drugs, gangs, um, you, you're more than you don't need to just be in your family's business. You can be whatever you set yourself out to be. And that's not just an athlete, but I just want to give them that structure, give them, you know, that team camaraderie, give them opportunity to figure out what they want to do and then just excel. That goes a long way. That goes a yeah, long way. And, and, and even, even if, if, uh, you know, the, the, the at promise youth that you're that you're working with even if they don't become you know pro athletes yeah but it's, it's something beyond that, that. Yeah, yeah something that they they'll have for the rest of their lives thousand percent i think that's super important i think you know sport is a unifier we live in this world where we're so divided and 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 i think from from my standpoint you look at a world cup a world cup soccer in general you you bring people from various races various you know sexual orientations to um various interests but you you share this common love for sport and that's how i see it and that's that's what's been able for me to kind of be a chameleon and blend in different environments because we all share that same love and so i just want to share that love with other people that don't or don't and haven't gotten the opportunity to experience it i love that you said that sport is a unifier because i've heard uh someone say a public public figure recently uh saying oh i don't like talking sports because it only divides people and while there yeah. is that because you know someone you look at it at a different lens right yeah it's, it's hard i mean for me i look at it that and this, i agree with you this is a way for me to be able to interact with people from all various cultures and we looked at each other as teammates and brothers rather than um, whatever religious review, religious views to, you know, if you're gay, straight, bi, or what may have you, if you, an artist to whatever. Yeah. And we, we looked at each other as what we are as, as players. And I thought that was just a, a beautiful thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. 
you know, we talked about your your journey as a as an athlete, as a soccer player. We talked about LAFC. We talked about the U.S. <laughs> men's national team and, and World Cup. I want to talk about your your passion, uh, your other passion of of fashion. <laughs> Talk to me uh, about that, and and you know where do you think it it it, it was originally? Where where do you think it originated from? Um, I know she's gonna love this. Probably my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she's big into like just shoes and fashion. I think since a young age, um, I think that it was kind of just genetically ingrained into me <laughs> I, I just love shoes yeah and so whenever i got a new pair of shoes i would go to sleep with them i would either i would cuddle them or they were on my feet amazing and you couldn't take them off of me and so from then on it's like if i ever you know was to get money from my grandparents i would save my money up so i can get a, another pair i would subscribe to to, to magazines so i'm always looking at the latest cleats latest shoes you know, I'm surfing the web when I can. We didn't have like a computer and all that. So yeah. I was, I'm like, can you take me to the library? <laughs> so I can go go to the library. A lot of kids don't know about that. But I had to go to the library, go on the internet. And, you know, I was looking up at um, shoes and a little bit of clothes because, you know, I wasn't that much into into clothes in that sense. I'm like, I'm all about shoes. I, like from my sense, what shoes make the outfit? Yeah. Shoes this, shoes that. It wasn't until I got a little bit older. I was like, okay, I need to be you know, a little bit more presentable from the ankle up. So <laughs> let me let me start looking at, you know, pants, jeans, to, to jewelry, to accessories. And, you know, as I got older, I started to develop my own sense of style um, and kind of just take bits and pieces from various celebrities, athletes, or just people on the street. And I'm like, okay, yeah. this is what I like. This kind of flows, this doesn't. And I was able to kind of just look at trends and you know, see them kind of just grow right in front of my eyes, and and then wasn't able to. Once I got a little bit older, I was able to kind of be able to afford different things. I'm like, come start adding this to my closet. Yeah, um, I can't be wearing that because I'll get made fun of, so I can't do that. Um, you know, I was playing around with it, but yeah, it's just been a an ongoing journey for me. And now, you know, being in LA, it's just kind of just taking that next step. And yeah. LA has been huge from my standpoint, and and I've just been you know meeting some really cool people, and I'm kind of just been diving a little bit deeper, more and more so into the to the fashion world. Do you have a stylist? Do you style yourself? Yeah, like a combination of the both. So I have a, a lady that I work with Kelsey, nice, and so she's able to help me bring my ideas to life. Yeah, you know, she's she's really great. But you know, from my standpoint, I have an idea of what I want to wear and what I want to do, but. No, but she's she's always you know giving me you know pointers and and um, you know it's been a collaborative effort, but it's been a great one. What's a, a a unique piece? What's like a staple piece that that you need to to grab on your way out? Like if there's one thing, is it a jacket? Is it you know like your sneakers? Is it you know some jewelry? What's that go to that I have to put on? Yeah, uh, it's tough. I think for me, from my standpoint, I, I'm I'm all about like layering, so I'm I'm big on. You have to have a solid T, like solid T-shirt. I like a lot of my T-shirts from Uniqlo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are just solid T-shirts, and uh, I'm wearing one right now, actually. And uh, for me, also with the Uniqlo socks, I think it's important to have a good. So I see yours, good sock game as well as, as um, you know, as the clothes. Cause yeah. I'm tired of seeing. I don't want to call it any of my teammates, but they're wearing like suits and stuff with like <laughs> Nike socks. And it drives me insane. Cause I'm like, please just buy some dress socks. And why are your Nike socks faded? <laughs> <laughs> why are you watching so many times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let those go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially with your suit, man. Yeah, come on. It's like, come on, man. You did so well. And then, you know, they put their leg up. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Like what? Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. So, do you do you ever see yourself like dropping the line or like a? I don't know. People always like ask capsule me that. or something. I don't. I don't know if I would. I think I'm more of like a, I know what I like, but I mean, for me, fashion is subjective in that sense. What I think is fashionable, you might not think the same. Yeah. Yeah. And so, for me to create a line that's kind of generalized to the public, I think that's kind of tough. 
because then I feel like I'm not really showcasing what I like. And I think it's hard for me. I'm also indecisive as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that also plays a role. But, um, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't want to, you know, close that door, but maybe in the future. But, I mean, I think right now I would rather be, like, more of a consultant for, for a brand <laughs> um, and maybe even a creative director of maybe an established brand and, you know, kind of implement my ideas into something that's already been established. I love that. I love that. When it comes to uh, bro- sports broadcasting, you mentioned that earlier too. Is, is that something that you see yourself doing in in the future yeah i think i think definitely i think you know you know soccer you you can't play it forever (laughs) and you know as as the years go on you got to think of what's next and you know obviously fashion is something that i've been exploring but sports broadcasting has been close to my heart and you know seeing guys close to me kind of transition into to into those roles you know it's kind of it's it's inspiring and it's something that you know might be for me later down the road. And I think for, from my standpoint, I need to get some more practice in front of the camera and get more and more comfortable. But, you know, it's, it's all about progression. And, um, you know, hopefully in the, in the future, I'll be able to kind of transition to, to a role like that. Awesome, brother. I love that. And, and, and I know that you, whatever you do, man, it's going to be with the amount of love and passion that you have and everything that you do, I know you'll be, successful in that now before i let you go we're going to go into rapid fire okay i knew that was coming (laughs) let me get ready for this (laughs) with kellen acosta you ready i'm ready good luck oh man about to get blindsided (laughs) by some crazy question you're gonna be like dallas or houston (laughs) (laughs) yeah no brainer Dallas or Los Angeles? Oh. Dallas is home. <laughs> respect, respect. Respect. Easy one, right? <laughs> well, being in Los Angeles, I'm sure there's a lot of... Has its perks, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you've, you've heard a lot more. I mean, in Dallas, too, a lot of Spanish, right? You've heard a lot of Spanish in Los Angeles. What is your favorite Spanish word that favorite you can say without us having to bleep? <laughs> um... Um, man, I don't think everyone's ever asked me that. Uh, Mesa. 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 Have you heard the song Mesa que mas aplauda? No. I'm going to send it to you. (laughs) It's lit. (laughs) Okay, perfect, perfect. You, if you ever go to, to a Latino party a quinceanera a baptism i've been, I've been to a few quinceaneras oh dude time. mesa que mas aplauda will be 100 percent played okay i probably parties. i probably know what it is because mesa was it mesa. like a corrido mesa or something que mas aplauda. Mm-hmm. it's like a it's just like a dancey it's like a i would say it's like a Talk classic the, dancey song was it like a like a mexican cha-cha slide that's kind of, dude, like it's like kind of, <laughs> it just gets the party going, man. Perfect. It's just, it's just perfect. I think you'll love it. I'm gonna send you a I link. I don't know why I said Mesa, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Best song to play at a party, I mean, I feel like what kind of party are we talking? Just Any party? you know, it's it's, it's I, feel like, I feel like the safest bet is a Drake. Can't go wrong with some kind of Drake song, depending on the environment. Um, I'll probably say like a new-ish Drake, probably Sticky. Okay. Drake. You know you get, how Sticky you get a, it gets. Hey. Yeah, you get a combination of, of, of the two, a little dance, a little rap, a little, you know, a little upbeat. I feel like that, like, I'll get a, a little okay. party going okay. a little bit. Speaking of, <laughs> greatest rapper of all time. Is so, well. Let me ask this question. Hey is, man, this is rapid. This is rapid fire with Kelly Nacosta, not rapid fire with Mondo Fresca. But, but I gotta, you gotta like rephrase the question. Is it in terms of what I think is a yes. favorite rapper, or is it like, no, no, no. like for Wait, me, you. you could say, you know, everyone's gonna say Tupac, Biggie, right? But I, I didn't grow up listening to him. Yep. Right. For me, my favorite rapper is J Cole. J Cole. Yeah. I wouldn't say 
he's the greatest, but he's my favorite of all time. Okay. Okay. Best singer, personal taste, best singer of all time. Besides me. Oh, you sing too? No, I don't. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Dude, you're hella talented, man. I wish. Uh, best singer of all time. Uh, I don't know, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. I think one? we've heard Whitney the most. Yeah. Whitney? In the, th- in the three seasons that we've done Mondo and Friends, I think we've heard Whitney, Whitney. the most. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she has an incredible voice. And I was like the first person that came to my head. So I was like, <laughs> rapid fire. Right? I was like, rapid Whitney. fire, man. You can't go. You can't. Can't go back. Can't go back. What's a nickname of yours? Lastly, that no one really knows about. What's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? <laughs> it's it's. It was like the when I was um, youth national team, and so, I think I had like a cut on my leg. And so someone came in, I think it was, his name was Mario Rodriguez. And he's like, oh, you got a boo-boo. <laughs> and so for some reason, that kind of just stuck. So people just call me boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard it in a long time. I, thought, I think it's retired. It might come back after this, but they used to call me boo-boo. Wow. I don't know why, boo-boo. Otherwise, I just go by Kel. Or some people call me Kai, which is my middle name. Nice. But Boo Boo is really out there. <laughs> well, Boo Boo, I want to thank you for coming to Mondo and Friends yeah. today, man. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. No, thank you guys for having me. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to kind of just chop it up with you. Thank you, brother. P- pleasure, pleasure having you here, man. And this is always your home. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Kellen Acosta. And thank you so much for listening and watching Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon.